All right, we're going to try it again. I don't know why we're having such issues. All right, let's try this again, people. Um, I don't know why we're having issues with the live videos all of a sudden, but we are. Um, I'd like to start by saying thank you very much. Um, I know that, okay, thank you. I know that this is not an easy situation for any of us. Um, and normally I don't like, you know, to show that, I'm having issues, but Friday, things just kind of came to a head. I know it's difficult for everybody, and Friday I had a really tough time um, on a minor issue. One of the minor issues I had, <laughs> and you guys are going to appreciate this, I'm sure. You know, have you had a pattern? Well, there's definitely a top and a bottom to this pattern. Yeah, well, I cut all the, the fabric out for this block in these colors, or I should say for this block in these colors, but really it should be this block in these colors. So yeah, I have lots and lots and lots of fun. Oh my God. Okay, so we have so much going on. Here we go. This is my block, my first block. And when you get yours done, post them because I can't wait to see them. I love seeing all the different color combinations that you guys are doing. Um, it's beauteous. Uh, and now we're going to work on block two. I'm having just all kinds of issues today. So here's block two. Now I am doing it in these colors, just to remind you. So it takes me a little bit of concentration to make sure I cut off the right, cut out the right colors. All right. Does anybody have any questions on what we've done so far? I'm a little bit off today. If you haven't had a chance to go by the shop um, page, check it out because we've got so much going on. We have Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt starting soon. Um, I'm going to be working on the free motion quilting with rulers for our Quilt along last year, Stitch Happens. Anybody that comes on, you know, can you comment just so that I know that you're here? Because for some reason, last week, I didn't see any of the comments until after I posted it. 
Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make all of these little flying geese. Now, there's a number of ways to do flying geese. I just happen to cut out all the triangles, but you don't have to do it that way. And yes, I'm using red as my background. So this is three triangles, and that's what I'm going to sew together. I'm going to sew this triangle onto here. Make sure you iron it the seam out before you put the other triangle on. I gotta figure out a better way of doing this because it's a little bit annoying. I'm trying to get this all set up. And we've got four of these. These are the flying geese that go directly around the center block. Does anybody have any issues or problems or questions about last week's block? Hello, Cindy. Thank you so much for commenting. Now I know I haven't. I don't know what happened last week, but I thought I was literally sitting here talking to myself the entire video. I didn't see anybody's comments until I posted it. I hate talking to myself. How are you doing, Cindy? And yes, I'm still having issues with my sewing machine. What, talk to yourself? I hate talking to myself with a passion. If I'm talking to myself and grumbling to myself, it's usually a problem because that usually means I'm upset and had issues. I don't know why my sewing machine has been acting so badly since I brought it home. Yes, I believe it or not, I have some to do too and I haven't had time to do it. Even though I'm home, Cindy, I haven't had a day off in over a week. I've made multiple trips to the shop Yesterday I was at the shop at four o'clock in the morning because I woke up. Early. All right. Now it's not even sewing. tell you this machine is not happy not even a little bit this machine is all kinds of messed up I might have to bring my other machine down from up on there and work with that one What's the weather like up there, Cindy? Hopefully, I got this all straightened out now. I'm sorry, I probably should have ran it real quick before we started. We had rain once this week. And it was kind of chilly for here. 
All right, we are ready to go. Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna go over this again, and I know it's gonna be a repeat for some of you, but it's a lesson that I think it took me a long time to learn because I learned most of this by myself. Okay, if just so that you know what we're doing. So this is the part that is going to be against the square, and I'm just doing one part of the flying geese. If you look at that, you see where it's ending? It's ending right in the corner between the door gear and this triangle. That's how you know that the seams are going to match up really, really nice. Make sure you, like I said, iron this first piece out. Starch is your friend. And I recommend doing a scant quarter of an inch. Especially with these small pieces, starch makes things so much easier because then they're not going to um, stretch on you. <sighs> so we have Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt starting soon. For those of you who have embroidery machines, now, actually first, so, this is one part of the flying geese. Now I have the second part that I'm trying to put on. And I should end right in this corner ditch right here. That's where, or start, same thing. If you want to start there, you can. But that's what I'm pushing for. And on flying geese, if you do that, and you get really good at it, it'll give you the quarter of an inch that you need on top seam allowance so you don't cut your points off. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Or in this case, instead of a quarter inch seam, it's going to be a scant quarter because that's what I'm sewing. All right. Now we got to do this four more times, three more times. So if you can see that scant quarter on the top. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. Now I'm going to do this chain piecing. Because it'll get done a lot faster. There's a lot of little pieces in these stars, but I like it. I like star blocks. Who else do we have on with us? So back to what I was saying before, we have the Hoop Sisters mystery quilt for anybody who has an embroidery machine and wants to try it, hasn't tried it, or has tried Hoop Sisters before and likes them. That's coming, it's always fun. It's the most um, affordable option for trying a big quilt. And this year's Hoop Sisters mystery quilt has all of the sizes from five inch blocks up to nine inch blocks. It's only using um, four fabrics. So that means it is going to be easy to put together colors and fabrics. With the block sizes from five inch To nine inch, that means the quilts are going to be at the smallest 39 inches and at the largest 70 inches, which is a really good lap size quilt. 
And there's nothing that says you can't make them bigger by making more blocks. Thursday's class I'm going to put part of this block together. I'm only going to do a portion of the block. We've got four sides. Um, I think the class will be too long but I think I'm going to do a lot more of it for the next class so that I'm ready and this class is going a little bit easier. Like I said things have been a little bit crazy. I'm sure everybody's new normal is not exactly what they had in mind and I am Believe me, no different. Um, I am doing a lot more work than I normally would. And trying to get things done while I'm in the house, as far as work's concerned, is not ideal. Um, good example. Let's see. I think I said this before, I haven't had a day off in over a week. And my father has walked in on a video once. I've had the dog interrupt videos. Um, I tried to do some book work yesterday and I must have gotten interrupted oh, at least a dozen times. Between the dogs and phones and other people that are in the house, it's crazy. My husband is working at the same time I am. He's working in the bedroom. So we have to be very, very quiet because he's on the phone. It's nuts. Absolutely nuts. And I know I'm not the only one that has some craziness. So we're running a sale, 10% off of any, everything, and if there's something on the website you know I have that you can't find, on the website I mean, um, just send me an email or call and I will put it together for you. Free shipping on any orders that are over $35 and with giving away fat quarters for orders over $35. It's fun. Fun, 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 fun. I have um, this past weekend done a lot of research for uh, class platforms for online and I'm really excited about that. These are going to be for free classes, they're going to be for paid classes, but I think it's going to be fun, and I'm hoping to have that set up soon. I'm fairly good with all this computer stuff, but, you know, the streaming and the live stuff, especially with a new, new camera, is a little bit over my head. So, with my daughter's help, I've already gotten a lot of stuff set up, which is great. All right. Now, actually, I'm going to put this down here so that you can see it, hopefully. And yes, I am using, this is a good, for those of you who don't know, good tip. Flannel or um, those vinyl tablecloths that, you know, have flannel backs make great design walls. <clears throat> All right. So hopefully, oh, you can see this without it going crazy. I think I'm gonna have to do a little mini portable design wall for when we're doing this, just to make it a little bit easier. Okay. So we just did these flying geese. 
right here, 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 and here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of the flying geese on. I don't care if you do the two sides or the top and the bottom, doesn't make a difference, on our center square. And then you're going to put one block on each side of the other flying geese so that you can put them together. So we'll put these two on first, then we're going to put the cornerstones on and put those on the center block. So who else do we have on? Anybody want to raise their hand and tell me that they're here? So what else is going on? I don't know. I've just got so much going on and so many things I have planned in my brain as far as classes and the shop and it's just a little daunting to say the least. We've been doing curbside pickup at the shop. If you call in advance and we take care of what you want, I can send pictures and emails. Remember everybody, you're going to do this as a scant quarter of an inch. For your seams. Normally it wouldn't be an issue, but with flying geese and all of this cut, actually cut triangles, I found the scant quarter of an inch helps a lot to make sure that you've got enough room to make everything line up. Looking forward to starting to quilt um, Stitch Happens on Friday. I love Rulork. Love, love, love. Normally I have my phone and I can look at my phone without any issue just to make sure we're all still live, but the plug wasn't working on my phone, so my phone is dead. So tell me, is there anything special that you want to learn that I might be able to help you with? Now, nine, I think nine o'clock, Cindy. I don't know. I've got it on my page. I'll let you know. It's either nine o'clock or 10, but I'm pretty sure it's nine o'clock. See, unfortunately, I'd love to do later classes in the day because not everybody is up early and ready to go, but um, trying to do this from home as far as making sure my father's quiet, everybody else in the house is quiet, the dogs aren't going crazy, mornings are the easiest time to do it early. When you're doing, when you're connecting the flying geese to the center block, since we're doing it with the points 
in towards the block. You're going to be seeing the seams that you've already stitched for the flying geese. Okay, see that point? When you're coming to sew this way, make sure you don't, you're on this side of the point, not on this side of the point. What that's going to do is it's going to make sure you don't cut off the point on your flying geese. Oh, Pat, that's easy. I can do that for you. I love the Tucker trimmer. Let me figure out a good block to do, and um, I'll see if I can work something out for you. Okay, that was Pat, by the way. She's having issues with the Tucker trimmer, and she'd like me to show her how to do it, and I can do that easy, no problem. Again, when we're sewing, make sure you stay on this side of this point so that when we open it, you still have your point. A lot of people have issues with that, cutting their points off. And it, believe me, it took me a long time to figure that out. Pat, what exactly are you having problems with on the Tucker trimmer? Have you tried it on a specific block or just for trimming, squaring up your blocks? which is ideally what you want. And when you open it, look, I have my point. I didn't cut my point off. Isn't that cool? Just takes a little finesse. But it's always easier when you know what to look for. If you're there, what exactly are you having problems with on the Tucker trimmer? Is it just for squaring your blocks up, like the Saturday sampler? Or were you trying a different, to make a block with the Tucker trimmer? Just so I can gear it towards what you need. Anybody who has watched or done our stitch hopping quilt along or any other classes that I've taught, some of the stuff that I'm telling you is going to be um, uh, just repeats because I've said it so many times before. But for others that are new, some of this stuff is just going to be very helpful. And one of the things that I teach or try to, you know, get across in the beginner's class is your seams. As neat of seams as possible. And what that's going to do is it's just going to help you in the long run with um, when you're trying to piece the blocks Uh, when you're squaring up, when you're piecing your blocks and your seams, you need to nest them or you need everything to go together, it's going to help if you have your seams as neat as possible. So I want you to be sensitive and alert to which way your seams are going so that you can nest the blocks 
and you keep everything nice and flat, as flat as possible, because the flatter they are, the better it's going to quilt together. Phyllis, there is nothing perfect in quilting. All right, Pat, for the um, Saturday sampler, what I will do is I will put the, one of the blocks together that I'm working on, and I will do a video um, with for that, just so that I can square up the block for you. There's nothing perfect in quilting, Phyllis. The only thing that makes it better or easy or look perfect, it's an illusion, is making sure you know where to sew. So, see, I didn't, I went hit the X on my flying geese. Okay. Now, okay, in order to piece this section, whoops, to this section, okay, the seams on here on the block, the center block have to be out, and the seams on the sides, oh, in, in and out, I'm sorry. So the seams, I had it right the first time, the seams on the square need to be in towards the center and the other side, the pieces on the flying geese that we're trying to attach need to be out. We started a little roughly, but today I think we got it done. All right, and okay. See, we've got one seam going down and this seam is going up. That's so that we can nest them. Like I said, a lot of this is gonna be repeat, but I hope it's not boring. It took me a long time to figure this out. All right, let's see if I can show you. So the nesting, this seam is going up and the bottom seam is going down. When you put them together, they will nest nice and tightly together and your points will map align perfectly. If when you feel that seam, it feels bulky, you can actually feel the seam, then you don't have it lined up right. One of the few places that I will pin is here at the seam. And I just put my pins on a little bit of an angle. <clears throat> Away from the direction, or my start point, I should say. So I'm sewing this way. See how much of an angle my pins are? They start in this seam and pick up this seam. Because I'm starting up here, I can hit this seam with my needle down before I have to take my pin out. You never want to sew over your pins. Nine out of 10 times, you're probably gonna be fine sewing over pins, even by accident, but that 10th time, oof. The, the least that you'll be able to have an issue with is breaking a needle. But if you break a needle inside, you can hit your bobbin, Kate, your bobbin, which yes, is, is a cheap alternative, but it can mess up all your stitching. It can mess up your timing. You can actually hit the inside bobbin case and have to buy another bobbin case. Or I've seen needles break in multiple pieces and actually go flying, which is not a good thing. Now, I'm also, because this is that flying geese, I'm trying to hit the X
so that my points don't get lost. Nothing worse than doing flying keys and having cutting all the points off of your perfect little geese. And remember, nothing perfect nowadays, especially not me and my quilting. You just got to pick your battles and know um, know when to just let it go. And I am actually, because I'm having issues with this machine, I'm going to rip out this point just a tiny bit and sew it again. So did everybody have a good weekend? I had a crazy weekend. I literally worked on paperwork all weekend and accounting and all of that stuff, which is not my favorite task in the world, but it had to be done. Are you guys having a little bit of a, a good time, at least even if we're in quarantine? You can still, you know, go out in the backyard and... But no quilt classes at the shop. No shopping unless it's the essentials, which... I can understand wholeheartedly. I actually have to go to the pharmacy today, but I'm going through the drive through because I feel the least contact that I have with people, the better. I did it again. See? Phyllis, I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. All right.
voila. All right, so now we've got a lot of little um, oh yeah, a lot of little triangles. And you can do this, um, again, chain piecing, which makes it so much faster. Just like that. Can you see that? So I'm going to put together these. I'm only going to do one side of these just so that you can see how we put. As long as you put, if I put one side together, you'll be able to put the rest of it together. So I'm going to do these quickly. These little half square triangles. When I'm doing a lot of chain piecing of little pieces like this or pieces in general I tend to do them the same way meaning I have the same color fabric on top and in this case I'm using keeping the purple half square triangle on top because that's how I'm going to actually iron it with Actually, you know what? Normally, I would say we're going to go towards the dark side, the purple, but looking at how the block is together and how we have to nest our seams, I think I'm going to have the lighter green color on top and make the seams go towards the green. And I'll show you that in a minute. Either way, when you're ironing, if you iron with the fabric on top, that's laying on top, that's where the seam is going to go. And normally we try to iron towards the dark side, but this is Toscana. And what that means, Toscana fabric, Northcott's Toscana, which I love. Um, it's a really good, it's a little bit thicker. It's not like um, some of the other thinner solid cottons that are solidish or even solid. So it's going to be fine with the seam going towards the slightly lighter color. And there's a lot of seams in this block. There's going to be a lot of seams in this quilt. Because there's a lot of pieces. But all the more reason to make sure you are good with your seams. You're as neat as possible, even if it means slowing down. And I'm usually a fast sewer, but sometimes you just have to slow down. So I'm gonna iron with this one on top. And what that means is I'm gonna set my seam with the light green on top so that when I iron it open or iron it up, the seam is going to be on this side, not on the purple side. And for those who don't know, I think I said this in the last, or I told you in the last um, video, setting the seam as you actually iron the fabric uh, in the position that it's been sewn. So I'm just going to put an iron over this, like this, especially with cotton, if you're piecing in cotton thread and piecing cotton fabric it'll give it a, it's like a um, a shot of heat and it will cotton expands what that's going to do is it's just going to give you a nice crisp seam when you actually iron it up and then I use starch 
not a lot of starch, just the best press, which is the starch alternative, on top of that. And I wouldn't do it any other way, especially with all these little tiny pieces. These end up being like two inch squares. I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what they are. They're tiny. They might even be smaller than that, but I think they're two inch. Two inch. They end up being two inch little squares. Okay. That's okay, Cindy. Have a great day. You'll be able to watch this later on. So, the seam is going towards the lighter green instead of going towards the darker purple. And the reason I did that is this seam is going up just like this one is going to be going down so when I try to piece all of this together and line it up I can nest this seam all right next Now, let's see, all right, the next thing I'm going to do is sew this corner block onto one of these half square triangles. You don't want to do it onto this one, you only want to keep everything in the same line so that we're actually, it's like a kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, you have to look at how you lay the pieces out and figure out from there the best and easiest way to actually sew everything together. Which is one of the reasons why I actually lay them out. Always lay it out. And then you do pieces and put it back, back down. Kind of reminds me of, was that, uh, was it Arnold Schwarzenegger that was a show or movie? Pick them up and put them down. Basically, that's all you're doing constantly when you're sewing, if you do it this way. Except you're going to pick them up, sew them, and put them back down. And, again, see where my seam ended? right in the corner. I very rarely anymore cut off my dog ears. To me it's just an extra work that I really don't need because I find the dog ears really help me in sewing and making sure everything lines up and I really don't think that they create that much more bulk to worry about especially in something like this has got so many pieces. Anything that I can save time with is a good thing. All right, the next piece we're gonna do is we have these bigger half square triangles and these I'm going to iron towards, definitely towards the, the darker blue. Not that there's big ch color change, but I hate ironing seam seams on the white. So I try to avoid that as much as possible. Sometimes you just can't, but I try.
Anybody else have any questions or anything else that they'd like to learn? I'm glad you let me know, Pat, about the uh, Tucker Tremor, because that's important, and it's a really good lesson to learn, something that's easy, and I love the Tucker Tremor. There is so much you can do with that, well, not just square up blocks. You can make a lot of interesting blocks with just that, especially if you get the technique sheet for different blocks for that, for that ruler. And at least I can prepare for you because that ruler is at the shop. So that gives me something else to put on my list of things to grab when I go. too much more. Uh, is Kanita on here by any chance? Unfortunately, Pat, I can't see the whole comment about block two. This one is block two. The first block, it was the center block. Um, for... The ruler or class of, or demo, whatever you want to call it, that we're doing on Friday on the Stitch Happens, Kanita had asked about what um, I use on my extension table to help it glide. This is what I use, and I have them in the shop for sale. It's the So Steady Grid Glide. And this is the one that I suggest first because it's only $25. If it works, it has a square hole in where your um, feed dogs are... Um, going and your rule, your foot goes. If this works, you can keep this on the, the extension table all the time. If that's not enough of a glide for you and you have, you use the regular um, glide, which is a little bit more money. And I also have that in the shop. The only problem with that is you have to um, take it off when you're done with ruler work because it only has a tiny tiny hole because normally when you're doing free motion any type of free motion your ruler feet I mean your feed dogs are down so the glide actually covers your feed dogs and you can't um, you can't keep it on when you're doing regular sewing because your feed dogs are up and what will happen is you'll rip that little hole into a bigger hole and it becomes ragged and it's not worth it so I recommend using the more uh, reasonably priced the grid glide that you can be used all the time okay now let me see I'm gonna lay this back down here so that I can see what I'm doing Pat, I only see part of your comment, not the whole thing, about this not being your block. Um, your
your block two? Or are you thinking about the Saturday sampler? All right. These are the pieces that I'm going to put together next. See, like I said, sometimes you have to lay it down to make sure you know what you're doing and where you are. So we have... Um, This one, we haven't attached, I haven't attached this side of the half square triangle to it yet. We just have, or I should say, we just have this part with this light pink. And I'm gonna sew these two to this half square triangle. Then I'm gonna sew the cornerstone block. No problem, Pat. I can do your block. I can do one of the next Saturday sampler blocks and show you how to square it up. And then I'm going to sew the cornerstone block to this other half square triangle. I think. All right, we've got a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle here. I'm trying to do this so that you guys don't have any Y seams because I know you don't want Y seams. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll work. Okay. No worries, Pat. I got it. I understand. I will put that block, one of those blocks together, one of the next blocks, which will give you a nice heads up. And then as far as our, or a sneak peek on what the next one is, which I believe is two fish on that one on the Saturday sampler. I'm just deciding how to sew this block. What I think we're going to do is where I sewed these on, I think I'm going to have to unsew it just to give you a heads up. I think that's what I'm going to do. So while I'm figuring that out, I'm going to sew the next part of the block together.
But yes, Pat, I think the next block is actually going to have two blocks. Two small fish, which if anybody's having issues with the Saturday sampler and Y seams, let me know. Because I brought one of those, I cut one extra block so that I could show you how to do Y seams if you needed it. Okay, I'm confused, but that's okay. Nothing. Good. Now I'm doing this center column here. So we already have this part on the block. We've just got this in this one, which is not hard at all. first part I'm going to do is sew these smaller triangles onto this square. Then I'm going to sew this one onto, actually, yes. All right, so I'm going to sew these two onto here. Then I'm going to sew this one and this one together, which will create two halves. And then you can sew this main part to this smaller part. Sometimes you just got to, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And you just have to figure it out, like a map. How are you going to put it together? Now, we've done this before. And I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but there's a lot in, this block, in these blocks that are the same. I'm eyeballing where my center point should be. You could, if you wanted to, make a mark so that you know where it is. But the other thing that I'm also doing, just to kind of help, is making sure that this dog ear on this side of the triangle and this one are roughly the same distance from the square. All of these pieces were cut by me so I know how I cut, and I know that they're going to be pretty close to what they need to be. So I'm not too worried about making sure everything is exact. Right, I've done the first side and I've ironed it out. Now to put on the other side, just like a normal flying geese, I'm just trying to, like a, like not a normal, but kind of like a flying geese, trying to make sure that this point is in the center part of this block. But a better gauge is by turning it around. So you can kind of see that this little dog ear is out about the same spacing as this one. And when you look at these two together, except for my little thread, They're very close as far as being symmetrical and the same size. And I'm going to start sewing right in this little ditch here and going this way. Again, a scant quarter of an inch. By doing that, I'm going to have a good 
seam allowance so I don't cut my points. And it'll line up exactly where I want it to. The colors of the fabric makes it a little bit harder to tell, but from the point to the top of the fabric is a scant quarter of an inch, just like I've been sewing. All right. So now I'm going to sew this one onto here and sew these two together. I'm lining this corner all up nice and even and I know this looks like it's off because it look it's just an optical whoops optical illusion but when you turn it over you look at it from the other side and everything is lined up it's nice and even keeping the dog ears on right I'm actually going to start sewing, sorry, sometimes doing this backwards is a little bit difficult, right here and down. don't know where I learned about dog ears like that other than I think I've been doing it for so long that um, it's just something that I learned over time most of what I've learned I've learned on my own this is actually the first time I've gotten to sew since Last Tuesday. It's been a week. I've been to the shop almost every day trying to package order and keep bringing more and more stuff back to the house. I think I've gotten four loads of stuff over here now, which is good because I don't have to keep going back and forth, but it also means that um, put it together the wrong side. It also means that I have an awful lot of stuff in my house that wasn't here before. So between all the stuff in the house and all the extra people in the house all the time, it's a little crowded. I have um, dogs that are always underfoot, but like I said, in the mornings, everybody's sleeping, even the dogs. Not everybody, but a lot of people. That's why it makes this time of the day perfect for doing um, these videos. Normally I'd be in my shop and I can do it before I open or I used to do it on Mondays on my, on the day that I'm not actually open in the shop. So I can just kind of just get the video and not have to worry about it and I apologize if it seems like I am rushing sometimes I don't mean to but it's kind of like playing that beat the clock game <laughs> and 
I'm trying to make sure that I can get all this done before a dog or a person interrupts me. So if I go too fast or I didn't um, explain myself good enough, let me know and I will go over it again. Or it's okay to yell at me. Tell me to slow down a little bit. All right. We have this piece and we have this piece. I made sure that the white seam is going towards the green and the green this part is going towards the green seam so when you have something like this we have two opposites in the same color I usually pick that color as the one to iron the seams towards when you have a white in there it just makes things a little bit more difficult to make sure that I try not to have a shadow of the seam behind the white as much as possible now when we line these up, we're just going to nest the seams like we've done a million times already and sew it together. You should, um, Look at this quarantine and this whole issue. I mean, I know it's difficult. It's hard on a lot of people for different reasons. But if I, you know, I try to look at things a little bit when I can on the brighter side. I try. I'm not always really good at that. But one thing you can look at on the brighter side for this whole event is it's your opportunity that if you wanted to know something, you know, wanted to know how to make something or how to do a technique, now's the time to learn it. Before I'm at the shop again and doing everything else. All right, so I sewed it, lined it up. Now I'm just gonna iron it and they're my two points. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but you get the idea. All right. Now. I think we're going to have a Y seam at least once, because I can't see any other way of doing this without one. And I'll show you what I mean. It's this little corner, the pink. So we have two blocks and the third block. I can't see because this one comes down any other way of not having a Y seam either here or here. Actually, I think I know what the problem is. Okay, we're gonna backtrack. Um, maybe not. No, I don't see any other way of doing this one without having it. Oh, I know how. So if we put this together, no, because we've already got this block in here. I don't know. Yes, I do. Okay, if you don't want to do a Y seam, and I'm not going to do this now because I don't have, I don't want to have you sitting here, but if we don't put these blocks on, what I mean is you can put them on this side complete, so you have the cornerstones, the flying geese, and the other cornerstone, but don't put them, um, let me think, hold on. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so don't put these cornerstones on. I would put two of these on. It's fine, but don't put the cornerstones on the center block that we just did. 
and I'll show you why. It's a good thing I'm just doing this with you guys. It's a good thing for me, bad thing for you, because you get to see my mistakes. Uh. All right. Let's see if I can show you what I mean. All right. If you don't put the corner block on, corner bolt, yeah, cornerstone on, you can treat this as one part of the block, the whole four pieces. So that way you can do put this one to this one, this one to this one, and you're all set. And then we'll go this way across, or you go down. I hope that you get that. When you look at it, I think it'll make sense. Even if you have to take this, and maybe I'll do that next time. I will look at it real quick. Um, unfortunately, like I said, last week was a little bit crazy. And I will put numbers on here for you so you know which parts to do first. How does that work? Is that a little bit better? I think that'll be better. I hope that'll be better. Unfortunately, this is what happens when you do something on the fly. I'm trying to set this up last minute. It's going to happen, but I did warn you guys that I would be doing this at the same time that you did. Unlike my Saturday sampler. Almost done with this part. And then you can put the whole thing together yourself. All right, let's see if you make a sense now. There we go. So if we don't put the quarter stone on first, then it'll go together easily without a Y seam. If you're okay with Y seams, then do it that way. I personally try not to do Y seams. Now they're not hard, but I've always had uh, an aversion, I would say, to them. We are doing a few Y seams in our Saturday sampler. And if anybody has any problems with those, let me know. Once you figure them out, they're not bad, but 
I think for me personally, I'm used to working symmetrical. And sometimes Y seems just throw me for a, uh, a loop. Okay, so here we go, we're making a little butterfly, or sometimes they call it a bow tie. Just like that. And I have, I here I've picked the solidish square, not the half square triangle, to iron my seams towards. So this seam is going this way, this seam is going this way. That way it makes it easy to nest. Both of these seams, I'm going to iron towards the half square triangle. One that just helps so we don't have as many shadow seam shadows under the white, and two, this way they'll nest. Now we're just going to put those two halves together and you'll be ready to put the block together because you'll know all the components. And I think next time, which will be Thursday, so I got to get my get working, I'm going to put most of the block together like I did with the um, Stitch Happens. I'll put the components together so that you can see how we put one together, but the whole bulk of it will be together. I think that's the easiest way to do it. But, like I said, last week was a little bit of a mess for me. I would iron, I think, this one up or down, yeah, up towards the cornerstone blocks for the seam. the back. So I have the seams going out and this one's going up. That way with all of these little piecing here we're not creating additional bulk in there. All right everyone that's your one corner and your center parts and you should know how to do it. If you have any problems or have issues let me know. I promise this will get better. It's just that it's I'm out of my element, my norm. All right if you don't have anything else for me, have a great day, everybody. 
Um, I'm going to the shop to package some orders, so if you need anything, again, I'm doing curbside pickup, and that's 10% off of everything. So give me a holler if you need anything. Have a great day. Bye.